Cops and other law enforcement people have read it. What were some cases you worked on that made you think that something paranormal was going on? Episode 7 I was an electrician in the Navy, serving on the Iwo Jima LHD-7. LHDs are roughly half the size of an aircraft carrier, so as you can imagine, they are quite large. Several friends supposedly had heard voices in out-of-the-way engineering spaces, the previous Iwo Jima had a steam leak that killed 10 engineers, and I had been in several creepy spaces on the ship, but other than a general feeling of unease, nothing weird happened to me, that is until one night, a couple months before I got out of the Navy. We were doing cleaning on the electrical switchboards. This required killing power to the majority of the ship. We did this in the middle of the night after working hours, and the only people on board were a handful of duty section personnel and about 30 of us electricians. In the Navy, when securing power to equipment, you hang red danger tags on breakers and fuses so that way people know not to turn on said power source because they may cause injury or death to someone. A friend and I went to hang several danger tags in a pump room. The main power had already been shut off, so the area of the ship we were in was pitch black except for our flashlights. To enter this pump room, we had to open a hatch in the hangar bay, climb down a steep vertical ladder, and go down another short vertical ladder. At this point, we are below the waterline. We hang the danger tags in the upper part of the pump room, then head down the stairs to the lower section with my friend in the lead. Halfway down the stairs, I hear what sounds like a woman scream. I stop. My friend stops. Keep in mind there are very few people on board the ship at this time, and we were the only ones in this part of the ship. He turns to me and asks if I just heard a woman scream. I say, I didn't, and neither did you. We hang the last tags as quickly as possible, and exit the pump room. We're greeted by our chief in the hangar bay, and ask her if she has heard a scream. She hadn't, and she told us she had been standing outside the hatch since shortly after we had entered. Ask the women in our division if any of them had screamed that night. No one had. And I never went into that pump room again. Not paranormal, really just something I always remember that makes me laugh. Starting out in the fire service. Get an alarm drop, an old building late at night that had stories of being haunted. Supposedly was used as a prison during the Civil War. Lots of executions etc. My captain was a middle-aged black guy. Funny as hell. We finished searching the first and second floor, and the captain relays to command nothing found. Command tells us to go to the attic and make sure it is clear there as well. Captain copies the order, then just stands there. I'm still new, so I don't question it. We stand there for five minutes in silence until the captain goes over the radio again and says, we checked it. All clear. Captain looks at me and says, I'm not going up there. This ain't the horror movie where the black guy dies today. He did say later when I brought it up that he had been in there before for an alarm drop and two water fountains turned on when he walked past them. I'm a medic and worked a short time as an emergency room medic in Detroit. I hated the job, but it was a good experience to have. Anyways, one night, about 3 a.m., we get a radio report from the police they are coming in with a patient and to meet them in the ambulance bay with a stretcher. Police usually do not transport patients. EMS does that. So, I figured it was an officer that was hurt or sick. We went out to the ambulance bay and waited for them. They pull up and jump out of the squad car and yell, he's in the back. I start asking questions while trying to assess the patient. The patient is stiff as a board. I don't mean like he was dead and in rigor. We were able to pick him up and carry him like a backboard. The police tell us they were called to a homeless shelter for a disturbance. They got there and this guy was standing in the middle of the room with all the others kneeling to the floor in a circle around him. He was chanting, and no one even paid attention to the police. The police weren't sure what was going on but, for whatever reason, decided this guy needed medical attention. As we get him in a room, he is completely unaware of his surroundings, still chanting. The charge nurse asked if I could understand what he was saying, and I realized what it was. He was performing voodoo, His chant was a mix of Christianity and African folklore. I'm certainly not an expert, but I recognized it. A lot of the nurses were freaked out and did their best to avoid that room. The only time he stopped chanting, he looked right at me and said demons would come for me. I am not religious at all and dismissed the whole thing as just an altered mental status. But, the next night, 
I was walking by that room, and a psych patient had taken his sheet off his bed. When I walked past, he jumped out and tried to strangle me with it. A nurse and aide were able to tackle him off of me. We restrained him to the bed and sedated him, but he said, I told you I was going to get you. I know this was long. Still not sure what to make of it. I work as a switchboard operator at the hospital. It's weird. On the overnights, every time I work, I'll get calls from way outside our area numbers. Some will even say out of area when they call. 1 to 700, and 1 to 980 numbers. Only on the night shift, there's no one there, just silence, or sometimes a light buzz, one time, it was the sound of a bustling room. I'm convinced it's some ghost of diseased patients calling in, the freakiest one was when we had a code, and boom, ghost call, sure enough, that patient passed. Not necessarily paranormal, but it still messes with me. During my ed clinical for paramedic school, we had a six-year-old come in from a pretty nasty MDC. I don't remember his specific injuries, but they were debating flying the kid out to a level one trauma center. We end up treating the kind and get him more or less stabilized, but we're still fairly concerned about him, so the nurse I'm shadowing, and myself are basically just sitting in the room constantly monitoring the kind until we can send him up to ICU. It seems like he's doing all right, vitals are stable, he's just laying there getting some rest. Out of nowhere, the kid shoots up, looks me dead in the eyes, and says, I don't want to die. Immediately went into V-fib, we worked him for two hours and never got a pulse back. This kid couldn't have been old enough to even grasp the concepts of life and death, but somehow, he knew the exact moment his life was going to end. I've got a pretty thick skin, and not many things I see on the job get to me, but the sound of sheer terror in that kid's voice still gives me chills. Got a call out to a funeral home for a business alarm and found the front door cracked open. My partner and I went inside, started checking rooms, and eventually made our way to the basement, where they do the embalming. I'm not one to get rattled and don't believe in ghosts, but my partner and I started catching some really weird vibes as soon as we went down the stairs. After an expedited check downstairs, we went back to the main floor and were wrapping up checking the last few rooms. Suddenly, we both heard two distinct footsteps on the floor of the room above us. Game on, Mr. Burglar. We quietly made our way to the stairs leading to the second floor and started up them when I came across a window. The window looked over the room we had just been in, so the steps actually had to have been on the roof itself. The problem with that was that section of the roof had no other ways of entry or egress other than the window I was looking through and it had been painted shut years prior. The weird vibes ramped up, so my partner and I looked at each other, agreed that we had done enough room clearing, and noped right out of the building. Not a cop or law enforcement, but one night, in the animal ER, a cat that was in the hospital started to die. Her owners had just called, saying they would be there in about 10 minutes to visit. I was a student at the time, so after the doc pronounced her dead, I stayed with her and petted her while telling her that mom and dad were coming. It had only been about three minutes since the doc pronounced her, but she began breathing again. She lived until her parents got there and then died in her mom's arms. My mom worked as a nurse practitioner at Denver County Jail back when I was in middle school. I remember one day where she came home early because she was pretty shaken up. She had gone into work and started her beginning of shift duties, which included looking over the charts of any inmates currently in the ward. She passed one of the suicide watch cells, basically a concrete box with a bench and a drain on the floor, and noticed that there was a man inside. He was in prison garb, but my mom didn't recognize him, so she asked him his name but he didn't respond. There was no chart, so she went and asked the officer on duty with her where the guy's chart was. The officer basically thought she was messing with him because no one had been in that cell for a few days. She went back to the cell with the officer, and there was no one there. None of the other staff knew what she was talking about, and nothing was on the security footage. My mom is the most secular, scientific person I know, and it really freaked her out. She didn't like being alone anywhere in the jail after that. I used to work overnight in a hospital, and creepy things happened all time. Call lights going off in unoccupied rooms, footsteps behind me in long dark halls, the smell of weird perfumes when no one is around. And those are just the little things. One night, I heard my co-worker call for me. 
I came around the corner to the nurse's station, and she was MIA. I assumed she had to run something to a room. I go about my rounds, and when I finally run into her, I ask her what she needs. She said she didn't need anything, that she'd been on a break and never said my name or called out to me. I argued for a few minutes until I realized she had no reason to lie. But I heard it plain as day. Still creeps me out when I think about it. Another place you want to avoid at night is the morgue. Not a cop or law enforcer, but I worked at a funeral home all throughout college. I don't usually believe in the paranormal, but there were a couple times I questioned it. There is this one time that stands out more than any other experience. Usually, when I was working, it was to work after normal funeral home hours at a viewing rosary. This usually meant I was there until dark by myself. Our funeral home was also an old house that always gave me a creepy vibe. My routine for closing was to turn off all the lights, make sure the crematory was off and cleaned with no one in there, close any open caskets, transfer the phones, and lock the door. There was this one time I was in a viewing room, turning off all the lights. It was a mid-40s man in one of our viewing rooms. Now, normally an embalmed body has their eyelids shut. Our funeral home used what amounts to sticky contacts that would hold the eyes shut. As I was turning off the last light out of the corner of my eye, I saw the light reflecting off of an eyeball. This is nearly impossible and made all the hair stand up on my neck. I turned around, and I swear on my parents' grave, it looked like that man was looking right at me. He had the glassy eyes of a dead person, and his mouth was still sewn with a slight smile. His head was turned slightly, and his eyes were wide open. Instead of being the good funeral home employee and checking it out, I sprinted out of there. I immediately called my boss and told her what I saw. She said to not worry about closing the casket, but to transfer the phones and go. She didn't believe a word I said. Going back in was tough. As I was in the front office, I was holding the phone shaking, and continually checking around the corner for anything. I was so scared I called my roommate while I finished transferring, didn't open the next day. They checked the body, and nothing was off. His eyes were shut, and his neck wasn't rotated. My boss made fun of me for a good couple of months after that. I can't explain what I saw, but it could have been due to tiredness or my brain playing tricks in the dark. Either way, I will never forget that experience. A story from Russia. The father of my girlfriend was a voluntary cop. It's like your American deputy, but with less authority. Those guys handle small stuff like walking on public lawns or a drunkard singing in the street. It was evening. They got a report that people are having an illegal gathering in the city park. He went there to check and found only two rather big families celebrating a wedding. He wished them good luck and went back, but decided to cut short route through the old cemetery. The cemetery is of the times of World War II and no new graves have been made since then. One old man kept half an eye over it for a small salary, and it was a rather tranquil old place. It was dark already, so our hero walked fast along the main road, when he saw the gravekeeper. The old man was fixing a fence that was damaged by a fallen branch. Rather far from him, there was his cart, full of gardening tools. Our hero decided to pull a prank on the gravekeeper. He sneaked to the cart, took one of the litter bags, cut two holes in it for eyes, with pocket knife, and put it over his head and torso. Then he sneaked up to the gravekeeper, turned on a lighter under the bag, so that lights shine from the eyes, and started wailing. The gravekeeper turned around slowly, stared at him for a minute, turned away, and continued his work. Our hero was so confused by the lack of effect. He started to feel bad for his childish behavior. He pulled off the bag, mumbled, sorry man, and walked fast towards the exit. At the very gates of the cemetery, he heard running footsteps behind him. It was the gravekeeper, who ran up to him, poked him painfully with a spade, and shouted, How many times do I tell you, people, wander around, if you need, but don't leave the territory. I used to run a shop on a busy retail street, where all the shop managers had set up a network of radios to keep track of shoplifters and other security risks. We would all meet up once a year in person to discuss local characters and best practices when it comes to security, and one year it became apparent that we were all being targeted by a homeless guy who was trying to sneak into back office areas just before closing to spend the night. Harsh as it is, we obviously all had to kick him out when we found him, 
but nobody wanted to report him to the police because he was always apologetic and understanding when we had to ask him to leave. Occasionally he would head straight to another shop to try his luck, so we got into the habit of calling it in over the radio. One night after I escorted him out the fire escape, I took my time getting back to the radio, and when I did, I found that four other shops were discussing the fact that they just kicked him out of theirs within five minutes of each other, which simply wouldn't be possible along a street that long. Nobody ever saw him again, and it became a bit of a running joke that he died somewhere, and we'd all kicked his ghost out. My friend is a dog sitter, and one of her clients was an old Bolivian woman whose husband had passed away several years before. My friend hated that place. She's got the most intense waves of terror and dread whenever she was there and could swear, she was always seeing dark figures from the corner of her eyes. Her boyfriend was accompanying one night, and as soon as he got through the door, he went ridged and said, I have never felt this much of a need to just pray to God before. And talked about it as overwhelming. A month or so later, I lightheartedly asked my friend if she had gone to the haunted house again. She went dead quiet and said she wasn't going to be dog sitting there anymore but would tea elaborate as to why. I finally managed to convince her to tell me some time later. The last night she was there, she was seeing the corner of the eye movements when the hands of a cuckoo clock began ticking back and forth erratically. She knew it was a fake non-working clock for decoration because she and the owner had a brief conversation with it, according to her, the woman had glass or crystal orbs all over the place, which I've heard is an aspect of Santeria. Even odder, another aspect is animal sacrifice, sometimes with limbs, and her dog happened to be missing a leg. My friend strongly believes that the woman practiced Santeria and had tried to contact her dead husband, but something malevolent had come through instead.